you say we don't trust them niggas no more don't trust them. Oh, oh, oh. Don't trust them. And I'm like, fuck them niggas, no, 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 fuck no, them. no. Fuck them. Fuck them. Yeah, I used to love them I niggas. Love yeah, them. I used to trust them I niggas. Trust but, them. but now I'm trying to touch them niggas. Touch but them but them now I'm trying to touch them niggas. No, no, yeah. no, no. Hi guys, welcome to BNG TV. I'm Solish Pedro, and today we are here with, I, I'm going to call you IQ, because this is how I know you. Before all this TV and everything, I knew as IQ with yeah. that banger song that everyone minds to. That's what <laughs> I know, okay? So, yeah. to those who do not know you, what is your actual name? My actual name is Cairo. Okay, how old are you? This is just basic questions, just so yeah. we can get to know you. How old are you? I'm 16, but, but I'm, uh, I'm 20 for anyone that's, you know? <laughs> for anyone that's including... You. And you, you know, I don't know, I egged that on myself, so maybe not even. I've, I, I've made the first move, but I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to flirt, I'm not trying to, you know. I'm just, yeah, okay, moving on, moving on. What country are you from? Um, my family are from Jamaica. Okay, yeah. and, all right then. So, describe what you, before I get into why, how people know you, to describe what you do, so you can have your first statement before I bring in anyone else's opinion. So, describe what you do in one sentence. I am a musician. Mm -hmm. Yeah. An inspirational musician. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Okay, so now when a lot of people do know you from, or they're trying to, you know, zoom into the video, wait, is this guy, is that the guy from Gang Lads? You guys, yes, it is the guy from there. So I'm just going to ask you a few questions on the show. I unfortunately didn't watch it myself, so. I'm just, it's annoying that I didn't watch it, but I'll watch it afterwards anyway, so um, first question, how did that opportunity come about, like how did, because we all want to know, we actually, a lot of people have been confused with the whole program, yeah. did they contact you guys, did you, how did the opportunity come about? Well basically they, they loved our music, we, I'm not sure, they loved our music and um, we just lost a friend called Shakon and um, they wanted to know how it impacted on us, okay. how they wanted to know our life basically, what we have to go through as young teenagers mm -hmm. in Lucian Borough, in the mm -hmm. borough, like not even just Lucian Borough, around the whole of London, they wanted to see the impact that the road has on us. Mm -hmm. And they saw us trying to get out of the road and they loved our music, they yeah. saw that, so they, they contacted us and said they, they wanted to do this with us, and we said, yeah, why not? So okay, so was well. this Channel 5 who yeah. contacted you guys? Okay, so for those who have not, like me, who haven't watched the programme, what do you do in the programme and how, how does it go about? Well, basically I explain my life growing up, mm -hmm. the difficulties yeah. that I had to go through, the, the deaths that were around me. Like, growing up was different to how a certain other people grew up, they did. Mm -hmm. Certain people haven't seen that side of life before yeah. and we're just trying to show them how hard it was. And, how we're trying to escape that kind of life and get somewhere better. Okay, do you feel that the show has put a lot of people in a bad light instead of positive? What? Because there were so many debates, like yeah. so many debates on Twitter and how a lot of people, even YouTubers who made videos saying no, they don't like the show, they shouldn't put it out, you guys, the people who are in it aren't looking the best, this isn't a positive yeah. like, image, so what do you have to say to all of that? Well, there's a positive side and a negative side, mm -hmm. and what we were trying to show people is that this life is not easy. It is hard. When you're going through this life, you lose a lot of stuff. You lose your friends, you lose family, you lose everything. You can go to jail from it. You can. We're just trying to show people a better way out, mm -hmm. and the better way out for us was our music because that's what we love, yeah. and that was our better way out of all of that. And that's what we were trying to explain to people, mm -hmm. that there's a better way than just selling drugs and trapping on the road mm -hmm. or doing whatever. Or getting, we we're just trying to explain to people. Some people never got it, mm -hmm. but some people did in it. And we we're trying to make people, we wanted people to feel that emotion when yeah. they saw it, mm -hmm. so that then they could know, even parents, especially parents, we wanted their parents to know exactly, so the parents could be more onto their kids. Yeah. Where's my child? Where's like, certain parents mm -hmm. make their child go out and don't know where their child is yeah. when they leave the front it's door. Yeah, I mean, some parents think their child is the perfect child ever. As soon as, but as soon as they leave that door, they're different. Mm -hmm. So we just wanted the parents to be more aware mm -hmm. of what is going on out there. Okay. Do you feel yeah. like this is what you guys wanted 
but not what Channel 5 wanted because a lot of people are saying, like, they kind of used you guys, like, not used as it, but, like, to show because, I, as I said, I did not watch the second one, but from the first one, a lot of people are saying, oh, black community, why are they showing us like this? They never show our good side. So was it different agendas? Did you guys want to show that? And then when it came out, you realised, wait, this is not the right reception. No, that's exactly how I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. I wanted there to be a talk about it. Yeah. I wanted them to. We always knew that there was going to be something negative about it because it's weird. See, us black community, yeah. we're well, weird in it. We don't really show each other love. Yeah. Get me? So true. We don't show each other love, and all they all we focus on is the bad, the negative. We don't focus on the good stuff. But don't you Get think me? that's what the program was doing? Focusing on the negative stuff because it could have showed you guys in college, like getting. Grades, yeah, like, you going uni, but it didn't. They showed reality. They showed yeah. what it really is. We're not going to college. We weren't doing that. We was we was doing what we were doing on the street, but we were still at the time trying to find a way to get out of that. Mm -hmm. And they were showing, we were just trying to show you what we have to do to get there. We weren't really trying to make anyone think, oh, it's just a bad impression yeah. on us. We were just trying to show you what is actually going on out there. Even there was a part in the film where this white woman walked past us and said, Stu um, she said, what did she say? Oh, stupid, um, like, black she said, she said black. Black. no, not black, she never said black. Hood rats. She said, she said hood rats, stupid hood rats. Yeah, whatever. So she said stupid hood rats. And we were just trying to show you the perception of what other people think of us. Yeah, mm, and yeah. we were just trying to show everyone that, that this is what we have to go through. We don't, it's hard for us. We can't just go out there and just get a job like this. Yeah. We have to have the grade, we have to put the work in mm -hmm. and we just didn't know we didn't have anyone to help us in it so okay by the way i do feel like the second part of this interview where i asked you about your music it's yeah. going to be very motivating because yeah. people will see that okay he is trying to make a come up but back to the gang lads and um, people this is what people are saying that for you it seemed like a publicity stunt like you done it to promote music mm -hmm. what do you have to to shut them up what mm -hmm. do you have to say to that well <laughs> what i have to say to that mm -hmm. That was never my intention mm -hmm. at all. When we, when he came to us and asked us about that, we never ever thought about it. We didn't even like think of it as a big thing. We thought they was, we never knew they were gonna give us our own camera, let us walk around. We just thought they just wanted a little interview, yeah, yeah. and that's it. That's what we actually first thought. We never actually said to ourselves, "Yo, we're gonna get so much publicity out of this. Yeah. We're gonna blow up for this." We never thought of it like that. We just thought of it as it's a good thing for the community, and we should do it because if we don't do it, who will do it? Yeah. Who will actually put out there what is really going on? Everyone's shy. It was on this, uh, no snitching thing, no yeah. none of that. Like, what's there to snitch about? This is, you have to laugh sometimes. You know? No, but I'm, I'm gonna speak on the yeah. debate inside because people are saying, but. I remember even having um, a grime artist on here and he was talking about, he was like how the people who went on there are stupid because yeah. they're just baiting out everything. Because you know how um, it had the, like, for yeah. the slangs it, and they were like, why would people do this? Why would black boys do this? Like, so it's, it's yeah. like there's two sides. People are disliking it because it's like, apparently you guys are baiting out everything. Now the, the police know this and that. So it's like, <laughs> like, what do you have to say to all of that? You know that sometimes I just have to laugh at. Mm -hmm. I think us black people, are we trying to be, are we like, we have one mind. Do, do you guys have one way of thinking? Like, I don't think people will realise that police know all of this already. They, we didn't need to tell them. Yeah. You know, we didn't tell them anything that they did not know already. And like, we never even spoke. There was no, even no communication with no police in there. There was mm -hmm. nothing to do with that. But... It's like people are just thinking one way of, oh, now I can't do this, now I can't yeah, do this. Yeah, I saw a lot of tweets. Like, it was just funny, you know? I just have to laugh sometimes because you have to sit there and think these guys actually like, don't know <laughs> that they don't know anything, but okay. it's just funny. I just laugh about it. I don't really okay. care about it. So that, um, in the second episode, apparently there was some scenes in your mum's house and your mum got to talk and stuff like that. So how was that opportunity for her? Like, Did, she, did you tell her about it and bring her on? Was she... Was she like fond of it at first or like how was that? She was proper shy. She didn't want to do it. She didn't want to do it at all. She was like my proper shy. Would, my mom would not She's do too that. shy, like she was she would like, how's my English? <laughs> like my mom would not do that. <laughs> my mum was like, um, I'm gonna need something for coming and do my makeup. Oh. She's like, oh, oh, my makeup's gonna look terrible. Oh, she was so scared that mum was watching. No, but it's it's she nationwide. Was, yeah. Obviously, like it's, yeah, I mean, yeah. She was oh. proper scared, she was like, Oh, I'm gonna look so ugly. Oh, da, 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 da. It's like she was proper scared about it, but 
then after we kind of said, hey, don't worry, man. Just yeah. it's just gonna, gonna come out. It just, it's gonna make it real. Yeah. Reality. Whoa. And then after those kind of scenes when we're in the kitchen and she's shouting at me and. But was that real? Yeah, it's real. Like all of that yeah. is. My mom didn't even know how to carry on me. I just walk oh. around with it. So where that. would you put the camera? Um, it's like a strap on oh. thing, so you can strap on around. So I used to just like walk in. My mom be shouting at me, and I used to just walk with it wherever she's shouting. And make a shout, like make a shout, make us. Yeah, it's real. Yeah. It, it's how my mom is in it. That is so interesting. I feel like a lot of viewers, we like, they're getting an insight of how mm. it really was, which yeah. is so interesting. Thanks for that. Okay, I'm going to go into music now. Yeah. Music. Okay, so that's enough for, from Gang Lad. Um, so when did you begin music? Well, I began music five years ago, but professionally two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, music's been. Uh, powerful source in my life like basically I went to Jamaica my mom sent me to Jamaica because I was a bad kid in it yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> I got shipped yeah she shipped me to Jamaica over there I have a brother named QQ okay. he sings a song named One Drop yeah so okay. he okay yeah <laughs> that took me some time but okay yeah so he um while I was over there he kind of brought me into the music life mm -hmm. and I sat down with him while he was going to shows on his tour all yeah. over the world and he brought me with him and he showed me that type of life and I just wanted it for myself, so I told myself one day I must come back to England and do it with my friends and do it with my people. Yeah, and I, can, I, can, yeah, I can sense yeah. the accent, I can see yes. the accent coming in. The more yeah. you talk, I can see the accent, okay. Yeah. Alright, so what genre of music would you say fits you the most? I think. Because I was thinking, when I was listening, I was like, yeah. okay, is this, is this fashion? Or is this yeah. that? Or is it, what, what is the genre? It's all around. I'm very versatile. Mm -hmm. Rapping, singing, I can do all of them together. Mm -hmm. I kind of learn yeah. to do it and I, I can sing and I can rap. So mm -hmm. I thought I should put all of them yeah. into one. But also, I'm from Jamaica, so I yeah. said, let me try to bring my culture to over yeah. to England and see if they can like and respond good. You're actually one of the yeah. first, as in, I've, I don't, I can't recall someone in the UK actually doing bashment. Yeah. I feel like that's why you're blowing so much. Yeah. So, how easy or hard was it? to do Bashman. Of course it'll be yeah. probably easy because that's where you're from, yeah. but bringing it to the UK, how easy or hard was that? It was kind of hard because you don't know if they're going to respond good yeah. from it. I was kind of thinking, well, what if they might not like it? They might think, you know how everyone's on Afro Reads, everyone's yeah, yeah, just... on that, so I don't know how it was going to work, mm -hmm. how am I supposed to do it, introduce it, but I said, no, let me just do it, and whatever reception yeah. I get from it, and I ended up getting a good reception exactly. from it, I was like, yes, okay. and yeah, let's go on with this. So your song, Never Liked Me, what was the inspiration behind this? The, the amount of hate that I grew up with, mm -hmm. the amount of people telling me I couldn't do it, and now, and now we're getting to a stage where we're just building up and we're like, look, yeah. we just have to laugh and say, yeah, well, look, they never used to like me, but now look, everyone wants to be involved, everyone wants to jump on the, the wagon. Hey, you know? I'm having some inspirational people today, <laughs> you know, it's so true. Okay, what made you stick? to doing music instead of other talents you may have had, if you had other talents, what other talents? Well, I could dance, that's okay. before I used to do music, I could dance, I used to love dancing in it, yeah. but um, it's always been a music thing for me, I always could, I used to love singing once, shut up man, you can't sing, <laughs> I was like, oh, and she used to always, that's how moms are in it, but yeah. yeah, that was my talent, I could dance before I could sing, mm -hmm. I could rap, but I kind of fell in with the singing and rapping, yeah. I put them together, yeah. Okay, so, um, we know that obviously you've been affected by a number of things this year. Would you say this is one of the main reasons, like, main inspirations behind your music? Yeah, it's the strive that my brothers gave me. Mm -hmm. And because they're not here with me no more, it's just weird for me. Like, yeah. sometimes I go on stage and it just feels weird for them not to be beside me. It's just, I don't know how to work it, but then I ended up, I know that they're with me, so mm -hmm. it just makes me feel, yeah. yes, they're with me, so let me just carry on this for them. and. I just live out their dream for them as well because mm -hmm. all my brothers ever wanted to do was get out of this road and just do something with their family, fly out. They just wanted, like, Endo, all he ever wanted was to have his own tour bus, own plane. Mm -hmm. He always wanted these stuff. He just wanted to go on a tour and just make his mom proud. And he wanted to, yeah, his mom had cancer and she died up with it. Mm -hmm. So she just wanted to have, he had his own cancer foundation and he was just trying to help his mom yeah. with all of that. So I'm just trying to do it for them now. Mm -hmm. Um, I was going to ask, so obviously with these events that has happened, are you more paranoid in your community? Like, because doesn't it, I'm not saying you're scared, but doesn't it make you more weary? Like, anyone could be next because it's, it's very scary. I feel like 
the, one of the main reasons I didn't watch the second episode because I saw a preview of it on the first one and I was like, no way am I going to watch that. How am I watching someone speaking about something and it happens to them? So doesn't that make, doesn't that scare you? It scares me a lot because obviously I'm going to be real about it. It's something scary. I won't ever show it, but mm -hmm. it's something that scares me in the inside because you've got loads of people coming to you and saying, yo, what if you're next? What if... And you sit down and think, bro, and then you start planning you start planning your journeys mm -hmm. on where you're going and if I should go here, if I should go there, and it kind of yeah. stops you from doing certain stuff. But okay. it's, it's scary, obviously, you wouldn't be scared. Even the baddest person you know is sitting there yeah. scared because they're thinking, bro, I could be dead as well. Mm -hmm. Like, M. Dot never wanted Chucky to come up there with him. Like, M. Dot was, I know this for myself, and it's scary. Like, Chucky was telling us that he had a dream. And his dream was that M. Dot was pulling him up. And I was asleep, he's like, what? what kind of dream is this? He said, Emma was pulling him up and I wasn't, I was trying to let go, but he kept on pulling me up. Then the next day he died. So it's just weird, isn't it? These yeah. little things that happen, then you start sitting there thinking, you start saying, yo, you need, yeah. you need to do something serious now. We need to get on this music properly because I told my brothers that, I told my brothers, it's not going to be none of us next. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be none of us. Like all the time, I call all of them, where are you? Are you safe? Are you good? Da -da -da -da. I bring them studio, I bring them here because I'd rather that than them being on the street mm -hmm. not doing anything. Okay, so what is one of the main things you've learned after everything? Like one one of the main things about life that you've learned that could motivate someone else? Well the main thing is I learned is to persevere, keep mm -hmm. on trying. No matter how much time someone makes you feel bad or you feel like you don't want to do this no more, because there's loads of times that I thought, oh, I don't want to do this music no more, man. Mm -hmm. Nothing's going on for me, did it, did it. Then after something big happens, so just keep on trying, persevere, mm -hmm. no matter what happens. No matter if your your friend might die, you might have family issues. Just keep on trying because yeah. there's, there's, there's mm -hmm. the sun will come. Yeah. Like there's better days to come. Okay, yeah. your song, trust them with T the Supreme. Yeah. What was the inspiration behind this? Like, how did you guys come together and then have this song? Well, basically, it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna be weird, but when I was in jail, yeah, I made the song up. And I was on the phone to Emdo and was on show and we were speaking and we were, I was singing them the chorus on the phone and it was like, yo, it's hard. Mm -hmm. When you come out, you need to, we need to do this song, we need to do this song. And then that was the, I kept on writing when I was in jail, I kept on writing down on a piece of paper what, all the songs that I was going to make when I came out. And I, I did do it when I came yeah. out, but the plan was for me, Shoki and Slimzy and Emdo to do a song. But because Emdo died, then it was kind of weird when I came out. It was just, mm -hmm. I just didn't know where to start. Like, it's just weird. I felt to myself when I was sad that I was gonna have to start all over again with this music thing. I didn't know where to start. I didn't know who to, who was gonna help me. I didn't know. I didn't have a studio to go to anymore. But Emdo always used to record me. It was just weird for me. So when we came out, I made the song, but I didn't know who to put on it. And then so I asked Instagram. I put on Instagram who would you think this is the, mm -hmm. who would be the best feature for this song? Amazing. And everyone just tagged him, T the Supreme, T the Supreme, and I said, yeah, we're gonna make this happen. DM'd him, I said, yeah, I feel like you should be on this. Yeah. Send him the verse, and then he just, he put a bang on it, and I was like, yes, I love this. Mm -hmm. Same time, video, next week, we got it done. And after, yeah, that's how the song came about. Great, okay, so we recently saw the Unbox Festival post you've been making, so how was that, and how did the opportunity come about? Well, that show then was lovely, it was mm -hmm. great. And the, oppor the opportunity came about, um, the person that kept the show used to be my manager, but he's no longer my manager now. But he wanted me to do something for Shoki and him, but he wanted yeah. me to, he just, he's ups obviously he's upset about it and he wants me to do something for them and he don't want me to be on this kind of life mm -hmm. no more. So he gave me a platform on there and he said, yeah, I want you to do a tribute for them. And I was, that's what I do in every show now yeah. anyways, I always give them a tribute. But then I do two of Shoki songs and M Dots, then after we just kinda of work from there and I just wanted the crowd to know that I always tell them persevere, keep on trying. I've lost two brothers in the space of four months. We started a group together and now there's one there's two people left out of the group and I'm one of them. So I always make the crowd know no matter what happened in life, keep on trying. Because if I can keep on trying and I've lost mostly everything that I started with, then you can do it as well, yeah. you can carry on. Mm -hmm. Okay, your hit song. When I say this is a hit song, like, I didn't even know, I saw this on someone's Instagram post and then I was thinking, who sang this song? Like, is this, this is from Jamaica? Where is this song from? It's called One Me, yeah, one right? Me. I'm, not, I'm not good with the Jamaican <laughs> slang. 
um, that had every girl dancing, like literally every girl dancing. How did the idea of this song come about? <laughs> because this is this is actually a hit. Like I even want to play it throughout this video. This is yeah. actually a hit. So how did the idea come about? Well, basically, when I was inside of jail, there was this staff called Renice, <laughs> <laughs> and I always used to sing songs. I used to always go to her and sing songs. I used to be like. <laughs> um, Carly, I need to give it. Hey, hey. And she that said, actually had, it's so yeah. sick. I actually love that song. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and she always used to sing it. She said, "Make sure when you come out, you make a song for me." I was like, "I never, never, never." Wait, wait, wait. She was a staff. Yeah. Okay. She was a staff inside there. <laughs> so she's like, "Make sure when you come out, you don't do no more road. Um, you go and uh, make this song." And I was like, "I'm definitely gonna make this song, and your name's gonna be in it." And after, so when I came out, I was sitting in the studio, and I said. Oh yeah, I, remember, I need to make this song before she gets on to me. <laughs> and after we were sitting in the studio, I was with Scratch and he was like, I was playing a beat. I was like, mm, mm -hmm. this beat, huh? Mm -hmm. It's a tune. <laughs> yeah, so we were doing that. Then after we just made the song, and we didn't really think it was going to blow how it did because yeah. we only did put it out on SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. Then when we put it out, girls started sending That's videos. That was and literally my next question. Like, how did you feel getting the crazy reaction you did for so from so many young girls? Yeah. As in videos, yeah. videos start seeing. All up to now, videos are still getting sent in, and then after, like videos and videos are just getting sent in. All up to now, it's just too much. Like, so <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, these girls actually like this song. This is. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to do a video for this one. I'm gonna have to do something for this. Yeah, you you have I mean, to. Don't even I'll hold it on you. No, I'm not gonna be in your video. I can't I'm not gonna be in that video, but you actually have to do a video yeah. for that. As in, but what's that okay, since you just said that now, because now people are gonna be thinking, okay, now you have to do a video by the way. You yeah. can't go back. And what kind of style would that be? Would it be like the Jamaican in the club and the girls in in that like, shorts dancing or would it be like a love story like and she's dancing? I'm gonna have to wait till the sun comes back, so mm. Nah, that's gonna be a good one. That's yeah. actually gonna be a good one. Okay, next question. A late, I hope I hope you you're ready for this one. A late post of yours features a girl that many assumed was your girlfriend. Okay, first of all, is she your girlfriend? Yeah. Okay. How is it dealing with all of these young females sending you videos and coming in and saying, "Oh, that's my husband," and having a girlfriend? How does she um, handle that? The way she handled, I can always explain to her that no matter what, this is, this is my music life, and she is, she supports me to the full. Like she supports mm -hmm. me all the time. She'll be at studio with me until late nights. Like she'll do shifts with me. Shout at studio. out, shout out to you, man. <laughs> shout out to you. Yeah, me. So she kind of works with. It. She always knows that mm -hmm. I, I got mad love for her. So. She might see all these posts and she sometimes, you know, girls yeah. will feel away, come on, yeah, why come wouldn't on. you in it? Yeah, but it's too much. She doesn't know the respect that I have for us, so mm -hmm. yeah, she kind of just goes on with it and says, yeah. it's going to better us in the future. Yeah, and where do you see yourself in five years? Five years, I want to be doing arena tours around the world. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to do. I want to do the big festivals around the world. And I, I, see it. I see it happening. A stable life, like, I want to have, it's, I don't really do this for the money because I love music, I mm -hmm. love the music. I just do it for, I want to inspire young people and make them know that they can do this as well. Yeah. Like, you don't have to choose that easy way of life, mm -hmm. fast money. You can work for what you have and that's what, and I can't wait till I'm at a stage where I can say I work for all of this yeah. that I have. And everything here came through hard work, losses, and now that we're winning from it. Okay, so where can we find you on social media? Like, what is your names? Well, on Instagram you can find me at iq underscore underscore pl, mm -hmm. Twitter at iq universe. Yeah, just type in iq. Snapchat iq is back all together as one. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's enough from me and iq. Definitely tune in to our next episodes. Bye, guys.